Hello, and welcome to DCC++. DCC++ is a complete open source system for operating DCC model railroads. The system consists of two components. One, an Arduino microcontroller programmed to operate as a DCC base station where the actual DCC electrical signals are created and sent to the tracks and accessories. And two, a computer interface connected to the Arduino that provides the user with full control over the model railroad. In this video, we explore all of the features and functions of this controller interface. If you are new to DCC++, you may want to first view my overview video that more generally describes the DCC++ system and its components. Or, if you'd like to see DCC++ in action, you can view a video of my small but quite complex N-scale railroad with its multi-train operation fully automated using DCC++. Other videos in this series provide more details and instructions on how to construct a DCC++ system of your own. But now, let's move on to the interface itself. The main screen contains everything you need to operate a multi-train model railroad. In the center is a layout graphic for controlling the turnouts. On the top left is a throttle for controlling the trains. On the bottom left are controls for power, and on the bottom right are controls for custom routes. Let's begin with the throttle, which consists of a single slide bar and a series of cab selector buttons. I have seven trains operating on my layout, hence seven buttons. Clicking on one of the cab selector buttons activates the throttle bar. Place the cursor on the slide bar and it changes to a hand. Slide the throttle up for forward and down for reverse. The digital indicator next to each cab selector button displays the current speed, green for forward and red for reverse. The throttle is programmed for standard DCC 128 speed step resolution, which has a maximum speed of 126 units. To control different trains, simply select any other cab button and operate the throttle accordingly. The throttle remembers each of the train settings and repositions the slide bar accordingly when a new cab selector button is hit. However, the system provides the same control using keyboard shortcuts instead of the mouse. The number keys, in my case 1 through 7, automatically select the first through seven cab. The up and down arrows increase or decrease the throttle by one speed step. And the left and right arrow keys immediately drop the throttle to zero for either a controlled stop, which is the right key, or an emergency stop, which is the left key. You probably noticed that I select different cabs, the cab function buttons on the right side of the throttle appear and disappear differently. These buttons are customized to control the specific DCC functions of each engine, from lights to sound. DCC++ supports all 28 DCC function buttons, though most engines utilize only a handful. For example, cabs 2004 and 622 both allow for separate control of the headlight and taillight. And of course, as they turn them on and off, the interface remembers, even when I switch to a different cab. On the other hand, cab 8601 has an older style decoder without separate control of the headlight and taillight. So in this case, there is only a single button to turn on and off all cab lights. In contrast, Cab 54 is equipped with a broadway limited 28 function DCC sound decoder. I've configured the interface to show buttons for the horn, the bell, and all of the various sound effects built into the decoder, such as crew radio sounds and facility shop sounds. In fact, there are so many functions that there's not enough room on the interface to show all the buttons at the same time. When this occurs, a small button labeled more at the bottom of the screen allows you to switch from one screen of buttons to the next screen of buttons. In which case you find buttons for city sounds, farm sounds, lumber mill, 
and even a method of choosing an alternate horn. Clicking more a second time brings you back to the original set of function buttons. You can also hit the letter N, which is a keyboard shortcut for moving back and forth between the pages of buttons. As I've been demonstrating the use of the throttle, you may be thinking that my trains have been running unmonitored up and down the tracks. However, that is not the case, because even though the system has been generating DCC signals, I have not turned on the master power for the tracks. So let's now move on to the control power section of the interface. But first, let me shut the throttles down so we don't inadvertently start moving the trains. Clicking the power button turns on and off primary power to the tracks. Below this button is a scrolling graph indicating how much current is being drawn by the main tracks. The graph is scaled to 2000 milliamps, which is the maximum current that can be drawn from the Arduino base station without using an external booster. With the power off, the current draw is of course zero. But when I hit the power button, the current jumps to about 300 milliamps, indicating my base current draw for the layout. As I start throttling up my trains, this will increase to between 400 and 500 milliamps. Clicking the power button again, and the current drops down immediately to zero, which, if the trains were running, would bring them all to an immediate halt. Power can also be controlled with two keyboard shortcuts. Hitting Shift P turns on the power, and hitting Spacebar shuts the power off. The Spacebar shortcut tends to come in handy when you inadvertently find yourself with two trains coming at each other on the same track. So now that we know how to control the throttle and master power, let's take a look at these in action. Here you can see two trains, number 6021 on the left and number 54 on the right. If I select tab 6021, I can turn on the headlight and then slide the throttle up to move the train onto the main track. A quick slide down and the train stops. A further slide down and I can reverse the train back onto the siding. Once stopped, I can then turn off the headlight. As mentioned before, train number 54 is equipped with a sound decoder. I turn on the diesel sound using this button. I can also turn on and off the headlight and separately the Mars light. or both. Note how these buttons change from dim to lit and vice versa when they're clicked to indicate whether the corresponding engine light itself is on or off. The bell button works the same way. Click once and the bell turns on. Click again and the bell turns off. In contrast, the horn button is configured as a press and hold. Click and hold the mouse to sound the horn. Release the mouse and the horn stops. This makes accurately controlling the horn much easier. Buttons can also be configured as one-shot triggers. For example, on the second page of the engine controls, I can activate a farm sound, A city sound, and even a lumber mill sound. These buttons do not stay lit since each sound is fleeting. Instead, 
the button blinks once when clicked to verify the requested sound function has been triggered. To now shut down the diesel sound effect, simply return to the main menu and click the sound power button. Before moving on to the next section of the interface, there is one more thing to note about track power. The Arduino base station not only monitors total track current for displaying on the interface, but it also protects the system if a short circuit or power overload is detected. Watch what happens if I place a piece of metal, an Allen key wrench, across the tracks. As soon as a small current spike is detected, power to the tracks is immediately turned off. If I try to turn on the power without clearing the short, the, simple, the system simply shuts down the power again. And of course, once the short is cleared, power can be restored for full operation.